Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAPS at Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 36, Questions 109 to 110. We're going to take a look at Coulomb's Law, um, which describes the forces between two stationary electricity charged particles, and um, we're going to use it to answer questions 109 and 110. It is the last uh, set in uh, section three of this booklet, so um, it'll be nice to finish off on a bang. So we've been shown that there are three uh, identical spheres, R, S, T, so if we just draw them here, so we've got our R, S, T, they're at some distance from each other, so the distance here is D1, and the distance between S, T is gonna be D2, and when they've got charges, so we've got a charge of Q on the R, We've got a charge of 2Q on the S, and we've got a charge of 3Q on the T. So it's important to note that if we take a look at question 109, it asks the sphere S will experience a zero net electric force when D2 is equal to. So we're trying to look at sphere S, and we're trying to find out when is it going to experience a zero net equal force. And, well, I mean, when it does experience a zero net equal force, when is it... Where, what is D2 going to equal? So if we think about it logically, in order for this to experience a net zero electric force, let's just subdivide, so this side and this side. That means this side has to, let's say, be positive, and this side has to be negative in order to have a zero net electric force. So one side has to be negative, one side has to be positive. So let's say x and y. So x minus y equals 0, which means we have to rearrange the equation. x equals y. So for if we have a zero net electric force, that means if we say this is x and this is y, rs has to equal st. So for Coulomb's law in this instance, that means if we use Coulomb's equation, so the Coulomb's law equation here, which states that the magnitude of electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So that means if we write this out, it's going to be, so we've got K, so let's say this side, so K, so we've got Q1, Q2 over R squared, so let's just say Q R, so we've got Q for R and Q for S over, so D1, the distance squared, is going to equal, so let's say the Y side now, so charges for S and T, there's going to be K, Q, S, Q, T over D2 squared. So that's what our equation is supposed to be. So what we're trying to find, question 109 is saying, if the sphere is going to have a zero net electric force, D2 has to equal. So we've got to make, we're trying to find this out, so D2. So we've got to obviously make the equation so that D2 is going to equal whatever we're going to set it to. So if we rearrange the equation, so how about we just uh, clear up some space here. If I get my toolbar out and clear up some space. Drop some space. Okay. So, therefore, that means if we just cross off what are the like, so K and K can get crossed off. And then we can substitute now our, oh, well, we've got two QSs here. So now we can substitute, remember what we said, so R is Q charge, so R is plus Q. S is 2Q and T is 3Q. So let's substitute the charges. So we're going to have here, so Q for R, so R is just Q. So the charge for R is over D1 squared, which equals the charge for Q, so the charge for T is 3Q over D2 squared. Let's put it in brackets so it's not confusing. 
So now, obviously, again, we have to solve for <clears throat> D2. So what we do, if we take a look at the question here, what we're going to do is we just have to um, cross multiply. So it's going to be so Q D2 squared equals 3Q D1 squared. So we can remove the Qs. So therefore, we're left with d2 squared equals 3d1 squared. So if we square root both sides, square root both sides, what we're left with is our answer, which is going to be d2 equals square root 3d1. So therefore, our answer for 109 is going to be c. So it was quite a bit of mathematics here, but if you just had to, you just, they, I mean, I didn't give you Coulomb's law in the stimulus, but if you knew the knowledge prior to how Coulomb's law works with uh, static or stationary um, objects that have electric charges and the forces between them, you could, you could, I guess, systematically approach this question. So now if we move into 110, the last question of the series. It says here, a small metal sphere um, identical to R, S, and T is carrying a charge of negative 2Q. So that's important to note. And it's first brought into contact with sphere R, and then with S, and then with T. After making contact with the three spheres, in that state of order, the charge on the sphere at T is. So this is important to note. So I might just get my whiteboard out here. Go smooth, get the whiteboard out. So what we're being told is that, sorry, get back, sorry about that. X is going to R. So X is going to make contact. So X is our, say, our unknown metal sphere is going to make contact with R. Then it's going to make contact with S. Then it's going to make contact with T. And we need to find out what the charge is going to be at the end here. So one important principle to know um, with, uh, say, electric charges and transfer of um, charges is that if two metal spheres come in contact with each other, what is going to happen is they're both going to share the total amount of charge. So that means if X is going to come in contact with R, the charges are going to combine. So in this instance, if X we've been told is minus 2Q, so the charge is minus 2, and R is going to be minus, uh, sorry, R is Q. So let's say that's minus 2Q. That's going to be plus Q. S is going to be uh, 2Q. T is going to be 3Q. What happens is when minus 2Q, so when X comes in contact with R, the charges are going to add up together. But what happens is both X and R are going to share that charge. And then what's going to happen is when X goes into contact with S, it's the same thing. The charges are going to bind together, and then it's going to share the charge between X and S. And then lastly, if it comes in contact with T, it's going to share the charge of T. Sorry, it's going to, the charges are going to um, add on together, and then they're going to sh be shared between X and T. So how can we show this diagrammatically? So let's just do it this way. So if I've got X here, it's got a charge of minus 2Q. Let's say it comes into contact with our R, which has a charge of Q. So what's happening is the charges add on to each other. So if we add minus 2 plus Q, so it's going to be equal to minus 1Q. So that means our total charge is minus 1Q, which means, therefore, X and R are going to be sharing minus 1Q. So they're going to be sharing a charge of minus 1. So therefore, they're going to be minus half and minus half Q. So that's it. So X, after it touches our R metal sphere, it's going to, when it comes into contact, it's going to end up with a charge of minus half Q. Then we're told it makes contact with S. So let's say it makes contact now with S. So S, if we recall, has a charge of 2Q. So if we just write it down here, S has a charge of 2Q. 
So if we plus them together, 2 plus minus half is 1 and a half. So that means the overall charge of x and s together is going to be 1 and a half. So it's going to be now shared, that charge 1 and a half is going to be shared between s and x. So that means, think about it logically, 1 and a half, half of, so half of 1 and a half is so 1.5, 0 0.75, which is 3 quarters. So it's going to be 3 quarter q. We're not done yet because the question's asking the charge on the sphere at T. So we have to go now one more time. So X is now going to come into contact. So it's got to, it's got a charge now at three quarter Q. It's finally going to come into contact with our metal sphere at T. So T we know has a charge of three Q. So that means if we add it together, three plus three quarters. So the total is going to be three and three quarters. Q. And remember, if it's going to be 3 and 3 quarters Q, that's the total charge shared between X and T. Now we have to find the charge that's at the individual level. So for X and T, it's shared between the two, remember? And that's what it's asking, the charge on T. So T is going to be sharing it with X. So this is the total charge. So therefore, the shared charge, again, is half. What's half of 3 and 3 quarters? So again, this is just some arithmetic here, just to make it easier. So three on three quarters is the same as saying, so if, if four over four is one, so four over four is one, eight over four is two, 12 over four is gonna be three. So 12 over four is three. Add three quarters, it's gonna be 15 over four. So 15 over four Q, is the total charge and now 15 over 4 we have to share it between the two and it'll probably be easier if we just write it as I mean you can write it as if you want it seven and a half over two but that's just annoying to work with let's just write it as 30 over 8 Q so if we share it therefore it's going to be 15 over 8 Q and 15 over 8Q. So you can see that 15 plus 15 is going to be 30 over 8. I mean, sorry, over here it was 7.5 plus 7.5 over 4. But I mean, what we're looking for is um, in the answer. So if we get rid of our whiteboard, the answer for 110, if you look at the options, is going to be 15Q over 8. So the answer, therefore, for 110 is going to be C. So you can see how if we start off, obviously, with um, X touching R, and then it ends up at T, how we can sequentially get to our answer. So if you're, if you're still um, having problem conceptualize uh, Coulomb's law or uh, forces of electrostatic charges between stationary objects, I mean, you can post your queries or comments in the comment section below. Or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.